So, it has been a while since we've taken this trip. We've walked through the land and we've seen the world. The dog stepped on a nail. And so now she has a cone in her head. Time has passed and no longer is the case. <laughs> She's happily and just kind of trekking through and going and banging and bopping and using her she used it as a uh, rhino horn for a while. She just hit you in the back of the legs over and over and over again. She's kind of scourging and pushing through everything as we speak <laughs> in the studio, recording all these little bits and pieces, and she does her kind of tip-tap dance like a little, little monster. Got clipper nails, just haven't gotten around to it. It'll happen at some point. This one's just gonna be kind of a compilation of all the things that I've been working on for a while now. I feel like the art is just kind of sitting and it's feeling its way through my existence and your existence and everybody's existence. I recently found out that I've lost quite a bit of weight. I didn't realize I had that much weight to lose, but apparently, apparently I did. <laughs> it's it's. It's an interesting feeling to realize you know, I weighed myself. I haven't weighed myself in forever. Last time I weighed myself, I was like 205. And now I'm like 190. I just started drinking like apple cider vinegar in the mornings. Just a little bit, not even a lot. And it's it's been helpful, honestly. I feel better. My stomach feels better. I don't feel like I'm going a little crazy in the moments of just kind of eating my food and then feeling it pass. It sounds very silly to kind of say that, but it's kind of how it worked out, you know? You you do these things, you make these things, you feel kind of full forced like everything is going to nourish you. And the truth is, like, sometimes you just don't break it down in your body. Hey guys. So I got some red ink, uh, red sumi ink actually, and I'm very excited about it. I'll show you what it looked like. One sec. This is gonna be really cool. I'm so excited. Uh, red ink. I'm gonna make something cool with this. It's gonna be great. There's something amazing about painting with red ink. It looks like mud. It just has like this really interesting aspect about Inktober. It kind of sits in me and festers and then becomes this thing that I'm doing and that I kind of hate doing. <laughs> I was talking to a friend, one of my favorite people, and they said, on a very simple level, it's because you have to do it, not because you don't want to do it. And that kind of hit me perfectly. Like, I am that problematic child <laughs> that doesn't like to do things because they're told to. I like to do things my way, and I feel like with art, art is definitely one of those things where, like, you just kind of do it, and you just continue to do it, and make it, and go on in all these ways and which nots. I think the hard part about it is, Inktober is thought of as this time where, like, you make all this art, and then you make prints of it, and then people buy prints. I haven't had that much luck with that. I don't know why. My my mind and my body don't seem to want to be happy with the idea of just making something, then making mass producing it, and then selling it. And I feel like the energy of that is somehow pushed across in my attempts to sell it because I, I'm just not, I'm not as active as I should be when I do it. It's funky. It's silly, it's ridiculous. I'm all these things, in all these places, and in all these ways, and I just can't comprehend. I remember the best part of all these little pieces was last year, the cover piece for my art book was actually one of the pieces I did that was a throwaway from Inktober. And I try and keep that in mind when I make things, and like, what I do not love now I may love later, 
So I have to just kind of breathe and let it all happen. I do find the weird part of all this stuff that's been going on is everybody keeps commenting on how much gray hair I have. <laughs> I'm aware I have gray hair. You don't have to tell me. I promise. It's not a secret. And I'm just going. I think the most beautiful part about a lot of this making is that it is kind of unkempt and uncontrolled. I hate control. I love just being and doing and making and not letting anything be in the way of how everything goes. There's some kind of perfection in the, in the simplistic aspects of it. The unstoppable weirdness of trying to create something and then not trying to let yourself go crazy from it. And the madness is almost part of the creation process. I gotta sell a bunch of books this year. That's my plan, to sell a bunch of art books. I got a little, a little art book that I have uh, that I carry around with me so I can show people. And I also have to sell um, a bunch of prints and shirts and all that stuff. I guess I kind of hate selling the shirts to an extent because it just feels so mass markety. <laughs> and I don't know that I've ever really wanted to be a mass marketer, so it's, it's weird. It feels outlandish in a way. Like you're asking the person who, I do this and I do the podcast, and if you meet me, I'll have a conversation with you. But to talk to a stranger about it just feels so fucking strange. And then there's YouTube. Jesus. YouTube isn't funny because YouTube does not really want artists, I don't think. If they do, they have a weird way of showing it. I think most of us lost our channels or we're getting kicked out of YouTube because we're too adult-themed, as it said. Human figures drawn on canvases, and suddenly it's too much for the... It was enough for the Smithsonian, but it's too much for YouTube. I don't... I don't, pl I don't, I don't plan on understanding it. I just don't. The podcast now. We're about to film the 50th episode for the podcast. The annual crazy 50th. I want to make it really special and beautiful for you guys. Even you, even if some of you don't actually even listen to it, I still want to make it beautiful for you. I want to get some guests and all these things. I want to grab some interviewers. No, nah, not interviewers. I want to interview some people and just kind of get it all going. What I'd love to do is get people to send me a bunch of sound bites uh, of just their art experiences. I think it would be really cool. And then I could put them all on the podcast for the 50. I had a friend who actually, he's like my cousin almost. He's a bike racer, Saeed Arana. And Saeed was going to be on the podcast, but he had a family emergency, so I couldn't do it. So rather than just record it and just be like, oh, well, same old, same old. I don't want that. I want it to feel special. <laughs> There's something about it all. I really love this painting. I know I'm not talking about this painting. I never really talk about the artwork I'm making while I'm doing these. I just tell you stories and little bits and pieces. I feel like this one's about like duality. A lot of my work, so I guess, is about duality. But I feel like this one's more so about duality because it's got so many heads. now. <laughs> because... I don't know, it's really sweet and beautiful. I like that, you know, not everything's the same color. Everything's kind of bleeding bleeding and really breathing through. It's your hopes, your dreams, your youth, your current, and your old times. Your past, your present, your future. Like the fates. It just feels like so much of everything is kind of wrapped in between. I like painting little patterns and stuff. I think the patterns are kind of one of the more beautiful, fun parts of it. It's something about textiles and textures. They're just so interesting to me. To see the world kind of breathe and blow and making the feathers. God, I love these feathers. 
I've been cutting brushes for years now to make them do the things I want them to do. I just want you to know that I appreciate everything you guys do. All the followings, all the comments, everything. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Oh, and check out my Patreon. Till next time, guys. Have a good year. Painter out.